Hello. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for being here as we open the John Bartley Science Museum. Yay. <laughs> We've been working a long time for this day, and we really look forward to it. Um, our idea is to have bring science to uh, West Michigan, to Muskegon, and also to our, for our students. We particularly want to thank Ashley Morrow. Stand up, please, Ashley. She was our student designer, one of our student designers. Uh, and you'll see her, uh, ex her exhibit when we go into the museum. Also helping her was Faith Ann Harp, who has class at, at Western Michigan until 3 o'clock today. So she is en route. So hopefully she'll be here before the ceremony ends. But I'm here to uh, welcome you and to uh, introduce Amber Kumpf, who her and I, and Amber in particular, has really helped us lead to the opening of this museum, and it's through her hard work that we are here, so uh, she has a few words for, her, for us. Thank you. Thank you, Toby. <clears throat> uh, I'm a teacher. I usually talk in front of people, um, but I wanted to keep this short and sweet, um, so I actually wrote out notes of what I was going to say, which is unusual for me. Um, so I'm going to kind of follow along here. Um, hello and welcome to the grand opening ribbon cutting celebration for the John Bartley Science Museum. My name is Amber Kumpf. I teach geology and oceanography here at MCC, and I'm one of the co-directors of our new museum, along with Toby. First, I want to share a few words about our vision for the museum, how it got started, and where we hope it will go. There are many stories to go along with how this idea first formed not least of all one that involved me wheeling a cart full of fossils down to the administration offices. <clears throat> Another anecdote involves a mystery and a dinosaur jawbone that you can read all about when you go see the display case in the museum. However, the momentum for this project really began when we applied for and were awarded a grant of $7,000 from the foundation for MCC. In that grant, we proposed a pilot study for this space, which included not only an updated display for the old dusty samples from the hallway that we call our permanent collection, but also a set of rotating interactive hands-on exhibits designed and built by MCC students. With the priceless support of our colleagues, the college administration, the facilities crew, our families, and our amazing students, we are very proud to open to the public the first phase of our museum. It's still the beginning, but we're quite proud of how things have come together today. As for the future, we hope to raise funds for a larger remodel, which would continue to improve displays for the permanent collection and would fund several more years of themed, interactive, student-designed exhibits. We envision that all the hands-on exhibits for a particular year would be connected by a theme. So for example, our first theme that's in the exhibit right now is energy. <clears throat> so there are displays on light energy and kinetic and potential energy. Our goal is to have four major themes, um, one for each year, and then rotate back to the, the first theme again so that we could improve and add on to those themes. Ultimately, our big picture goal for this museum is to continue MCC's commitment and legacy of free public outreach and education. Many K-12 student groups and the general public already visit our free planetarium shows and nature trail hike. Now they will be able to explore hands-on science exhibits as well as part of their visit to MCC. Not only are our college students learning how to communicate science to the public, but the museum is also providing community members an opportunity to inspire our college and K-12 visitors. In an exhibit we call STEM in our community, we are featuring profiles of people who live and work in West Michigan whose careers started with math and science classes, many of them taken here at MCC. My hope is that a museum visitor might read these profiles and be inspired to dream about the many adventures they could take that begin with math and science. Finally, I'd like to close with a few words about our museum's namesake, Dr. John Bartley. I only had the privilege to meet John in person once when I interviewed for the position here several years ago. However, through stories from shared friends and colleagues, I feel like I know him much better. I know of his gentle compassion. I know of his volunteerism. I know of his community building. 
<clears throat> I know of his love of Hawaiian shirts. <laughs> it is with these principles and this sense of joy that we will operate this museum dedicated to his memory. Thank you. As Amber said, we are looking forward to our next phase. And to get to our next phase, we're going to need help from everyone. And to, uh, for that, we, we have our director of our foundation director, Amy Swope, for our next speaker. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. We are really pleased to see all of you here today. Thank you for taking time out of your busy day and sharing this exciting and long planned for event. Um, I never got to meet John Bartley, but Amber, I think, summed everything up absolutely perfectly. And I'm very sorry that I didn't get the privilege, but I hope that all of us together can bring more of his dreams to fruition. I want to take a, a brief moment to read something to you. Muskegon Community College, dedicated to equity and excellence, prepares students, builds communities, and improves lives. That's our mission statement. Everybody that works here should have already known that, but that's our mission statement that was adopted by our Board of Trustees on January 18th of this year. It may have only recently been adopted, but I've had the privilege of seeing it in action every day of the five years that I've worked here. The John Bartley Science Museum fulfills our mission statement on all three counts. It prepares students to design a working, hands-on, science-based, indestructible exhibit. And it should be entertaining too which pretty much sounds like every project I've ever been assigned. It builds communities by allowing us to bring in our K through 12 partners and their families. We get to welcome them to campus, introduce our instructors, our staff, our programming, so that community college is around the corner and it's a place we've already been. And by the time you reach high school age, we're very comfortable with this space and why not? You know, we know we get a quality education there. And it improves lives. We're all aware of the need for science, technology, engineering, and math studies. However, our college students are also learning to build a business model, present their ideas, and manage a project from start to finish. I don't know how much more real life it gets than that. At the same time, our younger folks get to come in and they're learning critical thinking skills while they're having fun. So learning without even knowing you're learning. This grand opening is not the finished product of all of our planning, fundraising, building, and designing. Amber and Toby, our co-directors, have a vision for what this space has yet to accomplish. As awesome as this is, it's still only phase one of the project. We've got more preparing, building and improving to do and we need your help to do it every dollar counts and is deeply appreciated you can contact me with any questions i'm only a phone call email or short walk away <laughs> thanks for your time thank you amy I did have a chance to meet John, and, and he was my mentor and my office mate for my first eight years, and a very dear friend, and I, I miss him dearly. Um, and he's a great person to have here on campus and great in academics, and we hope that our, our museum builds on our academic legacy here at MCC, and to speak to that is our Vice President of Academic Affairs, Kelly Conrad. Thank you, and thank you. I'm gonna thank you again all for being here and supporting the college and supporting our newest museum. Um, Amber and Toby and Amy have made all the most valid points. What I want to say is a couple of things. One, 
we are so lucky to work at this college and be at this college and go to school at this college and live in a, an area that has a college that not only provides classes to students, that's the bare bones, but offers our faculty and our students opportunities to develop the things that we develop that are above and beyond. Um, and the museum is the newest of that. We have our planetarium, we have our nature trail, we have lots and lots of extra things that to me make this such a gem in our community. Um, and thank you for your support. I also want to say I am really proud to be associated with the faculty of the college. I came to this position just, um, I think it was about nine months ago, but prior to that I had been a counselor. And now that I'm on the side where the faculty work, I'm just so every day in awe of, of how smart they are. Um, they're very smart, especially scientists and mathematicians. Um, and how willing they are to take on extra responsibilities to do things like this, develop new centers and new museums and carry on legacies of colleagues who are no longer here. The third thing I want to say is I did have the opportunity to work with Dr. Bartley and he was one of the kindest, um, smartest, most ethical people I've ever had the opportunity to work with. And he was an advocate at all levels of this college. He was an advocate for the college. He was an advocate for the administration. He was an advocate for the faculty. He was an advocate for students. And what's really exciting to me is to see someone who is no longer with us leave a legacy that is touching the next generation of faculty and teachers then the next generation of students, and then the generations that aren't even born yet who will come to our facilities and participate in the activities we have for them. So I will close with that. I do want to introduce um, Dr. Nasbury, Dr. Dale Nasbury, the college's president, so that he may say a few words. He's not on the program, but I'm, I'm gonna put him on the spot. <laughs> You know, it's the, it's, it, life is interesting. I, I did not expect to be here. I thought I was going to be in a three hour, three and a half hour meeting right now. And I am just thrilled and blessed not to have to sit through that meeting. So, and I'd much rather be here. And, and, and uh, Vice President Conrad, I, I believe um, she was supposed to be on jury duty. So, so Kelly, it's a good, good thing that um, I, I don't know, your civic duty and all that good stuff, but, but I, I, we'd much rather be in this location. So, so two days ago, uh, my wife and I uh, were in, in Jackson. We visited um, a group, and I gave a, gave a talk there. And one of the comments that came back to me was, you know, you're Muskegon Community College. We're Jackson College. They used to be Jackson Community College, but now they're Jackson College. I said, why, why didn't you take the word Jackson out of your name? And my response was, well, you know, we, we are deeply imbued, our, our work is deeply imbued in, in what our community does, and, and they know us, and I believe they respect the work that we do. And, and thinking about that conversation, it reminds me of what uh, Dr. John Burley meant to this institution. I mean, I, I did have a crossover with John. I've been here for not quite nine years. My first year he was here, and he was a very interesting person, as people have noted, very bright and very motivated and just loved the students. I mean, I, I, mean, I, just, I just love the fact that uh, he did wear that Hawaiian shirt and it wasn't just show, that's who he was. He, he, was, he was a very, very nice, nice man, a humble man and, and a man who everyone, I know I knew about John Burley before I started my job here. I and mean, there, there were very few um, uh, individuals at MCC that I did know before and they all referenced John as a person I would need to get to know when I came to campus. So. So thank you for sharing him to the family. It's something that, that we, um, we, we appreciate very much. And um, I'm just happy to have been able to uh, share just a couple words with you. I did want to note, um, we do have at least one board member here, Sean Mullally, who, uh, Sean, if you could wave. And, and one, of, one of the ways we get things done here is having people who, who work in the community. And one of the people who, who helped us achieve what we've been able to do uh, not just by words, but by sweat equity, driving to Lansing, driving to have conversations with people who support the college, um, or who, who should be sort of supporting the college, but weren't because of someone like Sean, um, we were able to do the things that, that we're able to do. So, so thank you for your time. Thank you very much for, 
for allowing us to, to, to do this, or I should say our, our faculty to do this. I'm just a guy in a pinstripe suit trying to help them do a good job. So, so enjoy. Thank you again and hope you, you, you enjoy what we're going to see in a few minutes. Before we get to the cake cutting, there's one quick thing we'd like to do. And that is thank Tamara, come on up. Thank Tamara Owens for all the help that she did in sewing, in putting stuff together, in making sure that we're not too stupid. Just thank you. Tireless effort and not at all in her job description and offside her time too. And I think we're ready to cut the ribbon. If everyone wants to come on up, uh, that's it for our ceremony. So thank you for all. We'll, we have uh, planetarium shows at 5 and 7, and we'll walk through the museum after we enjoy some cake and punch. So thank you all for being here. <laughs>